gather into the house of the Lord, it is our prayer that we would say yes enthusiastically to all that God might ask of us. We're glad that you're with us today. I invite you to be seated. And as you are, we'd like to share a few announcements with you. Before you take those bulletins out, though, uh, we thank you for your prayers for our kids who went to camp this week. And I'm told they had a great time. And uh, Mona and Tommy, of course, went up to bring the three of them back, and they heard about all about their great time, the whole ride back from China Lake, and, uh, and then some, I think. So it was an exciting week at camp. But uh, Bridget brought a thank you note for us. Of course, we participated in not only helping to send them, but our yard sale out here. And uh, so I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to share with you, it just says, Do you know how special you are? I often find myself thinking of the many ways you bring joy to others with little acts of kindness, sincere words of praise, with a smile that's always bright. I often find myself thinking how grateful I am to know someone as thoughtful as you. And then Bridget writes after that, Thank you so much. I had so much fun. And then she gave us a quote from their speaker this week, Stretch, who's a friend of mine, uh, was our speaker at camp this week, and the quote that she wrote from Stretch is, God doesn't want you to play the game. He wants you to put it all in. And that's Stretch's quote, and it says, Love, Bridget. And so that was one of the lessons Bridget learned this year, is that God wants our all and not just playing the game. What a wonderful lesson. And uh, thank you for the note this morning, Bridget. And thank you all for your prayers and your support for our kids going to camp. I do want to share a couple of announcements with you this morning. We have uh, Jeff Barker here with us and his family. Jeff was running the beach to Beacon yesterday, and we thought it was a good opportunity to you know, extend the, the run and have him preach as well. You know, why have a vacation, right? So if you're going to run, you might as well preach. And uh, so we thought Jeff could come and join us. Jeff is a pastor here in the late 90s, early 2000s, and always we welcome him back with open arms. He is... Uh, very much a part of us, and I think this congregation is very much a part of him, and we're so glad to have him here with us today. And then just a couple of other announcements. I know some of you have already started Go As A Way Opens. Bruce tells me he sat down yesterday afternoon and started reading and couldn't put it down, and he's way ahead of schedule already. Um, yeah, I see other nods in the room. I understand. Uh, the schedule is merely a suggestion, so uh, if you get ahead, that's all right, too, but we hope it will be inspiring to you, and you'll have opportunities to share it with others. There's about seven copies still in the foyer. If you didn't get a copy, if you'd like a copy, if you know someone who would like a copy, we would love to have you take one and uh, join us in the month of August. There is a suggested reading schedule there, and I would encourage you to do that. And then I want to mention our Koinonia Fund, uh, which is our opportunity to help members and friends of the congregation. And uh, you're always welcome to put a gift in the Koinonia Fund, and uh, those are used to help people in times of need. And so those are there as well. And then also out in the, uh, out in the library is our labels for education basket for, uh, used to be called Sun Valley Indian School. They changed the name of Sun Valley Indian School this week, uh, this, in the past month or so, and it's now the Native American Christian Academy, but it's the same school. We just have to learn to stop calling it Sun Valley. Uh, but the Native... Native American Christian Academy, uh, we collect Campbell Soup labels which go to help them buy supplies, and you can see some of the things that have been bought with supplies from churches from all over the country. So those are announcements that we share with you this morning, and I invite us as we gather into worship today to hear our call to worship today from Psalm 106. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. As we gather today to sing the praise of our God who is forever faithful, would you stand together as we sing?
mighty and gracious God, our Heavenly Father, who calls us and sustains us by the very breath and power of your Spirit, we gather in this place today to give thanks, to give praise, to give adoration, indeed to give of ourselves in response to you giving of yourself to us. And even as our prayer has been that you would remember us, that we are confident in your remembrance and your keeping of your promise to us. Also, Lord, help us to remember your praiseworthy deeds and all that you have done, your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. And as we tell and retell your faithful acts to one another and to future generations, may you be lifted up and may you be glorified. Lord, we ask that you would receive our worship today, our music, our scriptures, our prayers, our meditations, our tithes, and our offerings, that you would would speak to us through your servant, that you would grant to him the words to share with us this morning, that our ears and our hearts may be receptive to your message. And Lord, not only that you would receive our worship this morning, but that our entire lives this week would be given back to you as an act of worship in all that we do in all that we say, everywhere that we go. Lord, receive our worship. May it bring glory to your name, we ask in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. As you are seated, we ask the ushers to come this morning and help us as we continue in worship by giving to him his tithes and our offerings. I invite you to be seated. And uh, just before Bridget comes and reads our scripture lesson, a, a thought occurred to me, and uh, I wanted to share it with you this morning. Our liturgy shapes us. What we do in worship shapes us. And uh, it's, I know sometimes it seems that we do some of the same things every week, and yet there is importance in the shaping of those things. And uh, I want to tell you a little story because I got a Facebook message Tuesday morning uh, from Miss Stephanie, who is the camp cabin counselor for our girls this week. And uh, one of our, our teens uh, asked her and said, you know that thing we do after the offering? And Stephanie looked at her and said, what thing is that? You know, we, we all stand and we sing that song after the offering, and Stephanie immediately knew what they were talking about. Well, you know that part where it gets to the end about the Father and Son and Holy Ghost? What's that about? And would you believe that there in a cabin... We were able to have a conversation about Holy Trinity because our worship shapes us and shapes who we are. It instructs us and teaches us. And uh, those are why we do some of the things that we do to continue to shape us and form us. And so we hear scripture, we hear the word of God, and we respond in praise and adoration. And those things have a profound impact on us. And uh, so thank you for your prayers for our teens this week. I'll stop talking. Bridget's going to come and uh, read our Old Testament lesson this morning. Bridget, if you'd come. The first reading today comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 through 12. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, 
so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey that so it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly on the land of flowing milk and honey. Just as the Lord, your God of fathers, promised you, hear, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The Lord your God with all your heart. Wait, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children and talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames and on of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore your fathers Abraham, Isaac and Jacob to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Good morning. morning. Gospel reading this morning is Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes appeared that gleamed like lightning, stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Would you stand and join us as we sing hymn number 574, Does Jesus Care? and the way 
as we wait on a message from God's word today. Today in our, our gospel reading, Mary Magdalene leads a procession of women down the path toward the tomb, the tomb in which their beloved Jesus has been placed following his crucifixion. On this day, they, they walk in silence. Tears drip down Joanna's face. Slowly, she lifts her sleeve to wipe the tears from her eyes. You know the path. It's the same path many of us have walked. Retracing the, the steps to the cemetery to, to visit a departed loved one. Anguish. Loss. Loneliness. We too know the path of sorrow. We too know the, the path of loss. We, too, know the path of despair. On this day, the, the women walk together in silence. The path winds around several hollowed-out tombs, and, and then Joanna's eyes locate a, a, the tomb across the valley. And she points it out to the others. And with renewed vigor and energy, they, they quicken their pace, uh, making sure to keep the ointments and the, the spices safe in, in their travel bags. Each step draws them closer, still closer to the tomb. They walk in silence. Uh, suddenly, a voice from within the group breaks the, the steady crunch of the sandals, crunching the, the pebbles as they walk along. Uh, the young women's, woman's voice pierces the silence uh, like a rocket launching into space. A at first, the voice startles the other women. Heads turn in the direction of the spoken words. And, uh, remember, remember when Jesus told us about his temptation in the desert, the voice says? Uh, those three, three phrases have stayed with me all these years. Man shall not live on bread alone. Uh, worship the Lord your God and, and serve him only. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. <laughs> the women in the, the group, they, they, they look confused. They don't know whether to chastise the young woman for breaking their silent walk or, or to share their own memories of Jesus. But the women turn their attention back to the task at hand and the sound of sandals shuffling along the stony path emphasizes their, their road marked with, with sorrow. Then after a few, a few more moments on the path, another uh, courageous voice, if you will, it interrupts the silent shuffle of the sandals. Remember when? Uh, re remember that time when, when Jesus got into Simon's boat? It was so funny, right? Simon Peter was not happy about Jesus' instructions to, to take the boat out again. I mean, he had already had a bad fishing day, but, but he did what Jesus told him to do. Remember how the nets were, were breaking because there were so many fish that day. Smile comes across the, the face of the woman telling the story. That story lifts the, the women's spirits as they step over large stones and make their way to the tomb. Story after story, memory after memory. Remember when? Remember when Jesus was teaching and those four guys began to pull tiles from the, the roof of the, of the building? Next thing you know, they dropped their friend down into the presence of Jesus. Remember when, re remember when, 
Oh, Jesus encountered that demon-possessed and naked guy in the wilderness, and, and then he found himself in his right mind fully clothed. Remember when, re remember when Jesus healed the woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. Story after story after story, memory after memory after memory. Each story, each act of remembering buoys their spirits as they walk the twisting and turning path of, of loss toward the tomb. We know that path. We've walked that path. Joanna interrupts the group. Remember, remember that parable. Remember that parable Jesus told about the Pharisees and the tax collector? A, a few of the women nod in agreement. Uh, Joanna assumes the, the posture of a teacher and begins. Uh, two men went up to a temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The, the Pharisee stood by himself and, and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people robbers and evildoers and adulterers, or, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I, I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. He beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Joanna repeats, I, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Remember when, Joanna says, remember when Jesus gave them that gotcha look? Remember how their faces reddened with embarrassment? Jesus silenced them. The minute they said, thank God I'm not like this Pharisee, they were just like the Pharisee. The women chuckle as they, they remember the, the multiple times Jesus exposed prejudice or, or duplicity or, or injustice. As they begin the slow uh, ascent up from the valley to the tomb, Mary, Mary Magdalene stops the, the group. She turns to them and shares a, a deeply personal account. She tells the group of, of how she and Jesus first met. I, I was just a young girl when the, the voices started. I, I didn't know who was speaking. They began to control me and to silence them. I would often beat my head against the, the wall in the corner of the room. My mother would rush over to, to hold me, but my arms would flail uncontrollably and I would become agitated, clawing myself and anyone who came near to me. My poor mother. My poor mother lived with deep wounds scratches and bruises because of her love for me. But after a while, even my mother couldn't help me. And I was banished to, to the outskirts of town. And, and when people came near to me, I, I had to cry out, unclean, unclean, unclean. I felt so unwanted. So unworthy. I... I sat alone day after day after day. When people saw me, they, they crossed over to the other side of the street so they, they wouldn't be near me. The group stares at Mary Magdalene. They, they focus in on her as she leans against a large stone to, to brace herself, tears dripping down her cheeks. Her, her body begins to shake, no longer able to control her own grief. Mary continues, then it happened. Jesus passed by. I, I, I cried out to him. He heard my cry. 
He healed me. He healed me. He, he saved me. I, I follow Jesus every day since my life changed that day. Mary looks into the eyes of all of her friends and, and says very clearly, Jesus changed my life forever. <laughs> These small acts of, of shared remembering keeps the, the memory of Jesus alive to them. They remember the good and life-changing moments they'd spent with Jesus. Today, it's really good for them to remember. Today, it's a really good day for them to eulogize, to, to share good words with one another about their beloved Jesus. Back to today in their remembering, it, it helps prevent their amnesia. They're forgetting about their beloved Jesus. So it's the sharing of important memories, uh, stories that, that keep them alive and present to them. Think of it, we do the exact same thing. It's what we do in church fellowship hall basements following a funeral. Sitting on folding chairs, drinking bad coffee, we eulogize our loved ones. The last thing we want is for amnesia to set in about our loved ones. We work hard to remember. We promise to never forget. But time passes. Ev events fade. Details erode. Memories blur. We forget. Slowly, Mary, Joanna, and the others, they, they approach the tomb. They turn the corner and suddenly they discover that, that the tomb has been, it's been disturbed. It's, it's empty. Jesus' body isn't there. Confusion fills their hearts and their minds. The, the women look to one another for guidance. Then out of nowhere, it seems, that two men, light cascading over them, stand in front of them and say something like, Oh, why do you look for the living among the dead? He, he's not here. Raised up, in fact. Re, remember how he told you that this would happen when, when you were still with him in Galilee? Then they remembered Jesus' words. It's, it's a powerful little phrase situated right in the middle of today's gospels, gospel reading. Then they remembered Jesus' words. It's kind of like Luke's way of saying, don't you remember? Did you forget already? Amnesia set in so soon? Hurtful words to hear. They forgot. Think of it, we, we do the same thing. We work hard to remember. We promise to never forget. But time passes. Even very important people and events fade. Details erode. Memories blur. We forget. Christians like you and I, we, we struggle against amnesia. Today we remember. Tomorrow we forget. Today we are faithful. Tomorrow we are forgetful. We even sing hymns and songs to remind us how easily we fall to the temptation lest we forget Gethsemane. We're not alone. We know how quickly amnesia sets in. 
It seems that amnesia is more pronounced in our lives when we step into periods of, of uncertainty and confusion. We often quickly forget that the God who has cared for us will do so even when we don't know what tomorrow might bring. We often quickly forget that the God who, who brought us important spiritual friends into our lives will still be present to us even when those important friends move away. We often quickly forget that the God who has promised to build his church will continue to fulfill that promise even when it appears that the best days have come and gone. How quickly we forget. We work hard to remember. We promise to never forget, but, but time passes. Even very important people and events fade. Details erode. Memories blur. We forget. If amnesia is to forget, an amnesia is to not forget, to remember. In worship, it's a critical word that we use, especially in the, the Lord's table, the, the Eucharist, the great thanksgiving. This is where the, the hard work of not forgetting takes place. Yet amnesia isn't merely sitting on the couch recalling the past events of what has happened. In worship here and now, today, we, we gathered once, like Mary and Joanna and the other women at the tomb, remember and enter again, yet again, into the mystery and power of, of Christ's death and resurrection not as something just to think about, but as a present reality. Here and now, today we, we remember and enter into God's saving deed and action once again. We are being saved today. Like Mary, we are being healed today. Today, salvation has come to this household of faith. This is the good news of Jesus the Christ, especially when the upcoming weeks include words like transition and loss and change. How easy it is to forget, to not remember. Here's the key. Being saved by faith is always occurring. It's present continuous. It's, it's ongoing. Then they remembered his words and returning to the tomb, they, they told all of this to the eleven and to all of the rest. Becomes the, the centerpiece of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In anamnesia, in not forgetting, in, in remembering, past and future collapse into the present, into the now. Think of it, we, we do the same thing. It's what we do in our, our gatherings. Sitting on folding chairs, drinking bad church coffee, we remember the transforming work of God in Jesus the Christ. The last thing we want is for amnesia to set in about what, has God, what God has accomplished in our lives and in all of the life of creation. In our worship, we, we work hard to remember. And granted, when we leave on, on Sunday, uh, we promise to not forget, but time passes and events and people fade and details erode and Memories blur, we, we forget. But today, again, as we gather at the table, we are, like Mary, being saved. 
we are being healed as we sit in Jesus' presence. And in this gathering, we join with the voices of Mary and Joanna and all those other first witnesses to remember the, the life, the death, the resurrection, the very ministry of our beloved Jesus. A ministry which includes even us today. And in gathering around this table, we join with all those who have gone before us. Which is why coming back here is such a profound experience for me. I gather with many of you that I've known along the way, but, but also when I gather here, May is with us. Flett and Arlene, Bernard and Alma, Horace and Alberta, Grace and Craig, something that you don't know. Shirley, John, so many others. We are all being saved, being made whole, being healed as Mary was that day as well. And in these moments of Christian worship, past and future, all collapse into the present. Those who have gone before us are with us. Those who are yet to come are present with us. All of creation remembers the death, resurrection of Jesus the Christ and steps into the abundant life that God offers to us in Jesus. And so, week after week after week, we tell the same stories over and over and over again. We read the same lessons over and over and over again. And in the practice I had growing up in, in the Midwest, we had some of the saints of the church tell the same stories over and over and over again as they bore witness to what God had done in their life. I think that's a critical practice. It prevents amnesia. It prevents us forgetting that the God who has cared for us is the same God who will still care for us as we move forward. And the hymn we sang just before says that very lesson. Does he care when I'm going through the worst of times? When life doesn't make sense, when I, when I can't even muster the energy to get out of bed, oh yes, he cares. He cares deeply. And that's why we gather week after week after week to step into, yet again, the very work that God has done in Jesus the Christ. This, my friends, is the good news of the gospel. And this is why it's such good news. May you find the abundant life, even in glimmers and glimpses, as you walk the path, sometimes filled with loss and pain. Does he care? Oh, yes, he cares. Let us not forget. Amen. join us as we stand and as we sing. During our song, you're invited to come and join us at these altars, your own altar of remembrance, perhaps, of the way in which the Lord has sustained you and walked with you in the years past, your confidence of the way in which he walks with you even today. And so as we stand and sing, come and join us, and then we will gather at the table of remembrance, the feast of our Lord, to celebrate the death and the resurrection of Christ. Will you stand with me? Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a sin.
you to find a posture of prayer in which you can bow your head and your heart before the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. God who remembers your children and your people, we bow our hearts before you aware of our own forgetfulness, aware of our own wanderings, aware of the other narratives in this world which would seek to crowd out your story in our lives. We confess, Lord, that sometimes our calendars do not reflect the best of our intentions. Sometimes our checkbooks do not reflect the best of our intentions. Sometimes our habits and our practices do not reflect the best of our intentions. Lord, we are sorry. And at the same time, Lord, we are confident of your grace, that you are mindful that we are but dust. You know our frame, and you are gracious and forgiving toward us. So, Lord, help us to remember. Help our practices, our calendars, our checkbooks, our habits to be formed by your story, our remembrance of Christ who died and rose again for our sake. God, as we gather this morning, we gather also with our own burdens and our own griefs. And as we entered into this story, we found ourselves in this story. We were reminded of our own losses in life. Deep-seated grief that travels with us and sometimes seems to paralyze us. So, Lord, we bring ourselves and put ourselves before you and offer to you our brokenness and our grief. Confident that you walk with us through that valley as well. 
Does Jesus care? Oh, yes. He cares. I know he cares. So, Lord, even as we remember this morning those that we love and those that we miss, may we also remember your deep love for us and that you care for us in our grief. Lord, we pray for this, your church, in these crucial moments and crucial days. Even as we think back and reflect on the heritage of this particular congregation, serving in this particular building, in this particular location, at this particular time, we reflect on the great work that you have accomplished through us. We remember the things that you have accomplished in this place, the lives that you have touched through these ministries, the the ministers who have been trained here in this pulpit and in these pews and have gone on to serve and to continue to serve. And Lord, we give you thanks as we remember. May our remembrance also grant us confidence for the future. Lord, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray especially for our church board, our district superintendent. We pray for whoever may serve in this pulpit, that she or he may bear great fruit and carry your word faithfully in this congregation and in this town. Lord, hear our prayers. And Almighty God, also as we gather, we bring to you our intercessions and our burdens for those that we love, the burdens that are heavy on our hearts, for those who are in need of healing or a touch. We give thanks for answered prayer and that Brenda's joining us here today. We give thanks for George and Victoria and for their, their history with us and their ability to be with us this day. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Karen as she goes even now in these moments to comfort those who grieve. Lord, we continue to pray for those in need of healing, and we especially pray for Anne, for Nancy, for Beverly. May you be their great physician in these moments. May you be mighty to save in these moments, and may you accomplish your purposes in their lives. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for the other burdens represented here in this place, we ask that you would lift our burdens, that you would comfort our downcast hearts, and that you would intercede on behalf of those we love. Lord, hear our prayers as we lift them to you in these moments. And we remember, we remember when Jesus sat with his friends for a meal. And in an unexpected way as he sat with them, he took bread, blessed, broke, shared it with them, and said, this is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also after they'd eaten, He took cup, blessed, and shared it with them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so we remember. We participate. We retell. We relive and reenact the story that shapes and forms us as the people of God. We remember. Lord, would you pour out your spirit upon these gifts, And upon these, your people, that even as these are the body and blood of Christ for us, we also may be the broken body, the shed blood of Christ poured out for the sake of the world. May you help us to remember, to reenact, to relive and participate in your gospel, your good news. We are bold to pray this in the powerful name of Jesus who died, who rose and is coming again, and who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts of God are given for the people of God. We invite you to come and receive the elements, return to your seats, and we will remember together. Would you come? Remember when, remember when, remember when Jesus sat with his friends and shared a meal with them, and in doing so joined with all the saints who would come after. And so we gather with the church, a mighty army stretched throughout all of time and space, linked arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder, and we participate in the grand story. Remember, Christ's body was broken that you might be made whole. Eat this and remember that Christ died for you. The cup of the new covenant in Jesus' blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins may preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Lord, help us to live lives of remembrance, confident of your presence with us, confidence of your sustaining grace, confidence of your salvation, not only in the past, but in the present and continuing. May we be your church. May we be the body and blood broken and poured out for this world. May we live the life that Jesus shaped for us. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen and amen. My hope is built in nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I'd like to invite you to stand with us as we sing number 436, The Solid Rock.
like to make announcements at the end of the service, but I forgot one. There is leftover food from yesterday morning, some of it freshly baked Friday night and Saturday morning. It needs to be eaten or go home with people. So would you help yourself to that? You can stay and visit and eat some or package some and take it with you. Uh, it can't stay here. So we want to invite you to do that. And with that said, I'd like to offer this blessing, this benediction, as we prepare to depart in peace today. May the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, may he also equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in his grace and his peace today.